Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of the Ohio Guys here on location at Rosemont, Illinois at Call Out Delete, and I'm here with none other than Tom Fawn. I am Tom Fawn, and this is David. I just met him, but I like his voice. Oh, thank you. It's down here. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'll admit, I did study a little bit of radio on the side once I was You got school. a radio voice. You have a very yeah. nice radio voice. And yep. that's Christian behind the camera. Very yep. nice guy. You're not going to see him. <laughs> yep. Got to avoid uh, popping the peas. Yes, that's right. Now, how did you know that? That's, that's one. Mm-hmm. I'm famous for that. They have the, when we do the recordings in L.A., they have the popper stopper on yep. the microphone. You know, probably. Oh, yeah. But it's it's, like they always have circle. it for me. They're like, oh, yeah. Tom Fawn's here. Or watch those peas. Yeah. Yeah, because usually the best way to do is go a little to the side yep. or back up a little bit. Right. Yep. Or they have green apples. We talk about this. We have a panel today at 5 mm-hmm. o'clock. I hope to see you there. Uh, you're watching, so you're not going to be there. Um, they have green apples in the studios for us. Hmm. Why is that, Dorothy? Just because it's something. So you don't get smacky. Yeah. yeah. yeah so they say my sense. lips smack you a little bit. If you, don't, if you didn't warm up before, if you didn't drink water, yeah. they say take a bite of the apple, then you won't pop the peas. You know. Con, I'll delete. Mm-hmm. Getting some tips there on me. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, sure. No way. We'll get it back. <laughs> yeah, well, what's it like working in the anime industry today? It's great. It's, there's, there's, every actor wants to work more. Uh, everyone wishes it was maybe more money or whatever like that. But it's more now than it was uh, years ago. In the beginning, Dorothy and I and my sister Melissa, my brother Jonathan, a guy named Steve, who you may know as Steve Bloom, uh, we all started together around 90, 91, 92, none of you were born, and it was like the Giver, Macros, and Orgus. Those were the first three of this new wave of, uh, they called it Japanimation back then, of, mm-hmm. of anime. Yeah. This is before conventions. True. Those were the first three. And we worked with a wonderful guy named Kevin Seymour, who was very, uh, he was key in getting a lot of this product from Japan and translating it, and he was wonderful. Uh, so I remember the Giver and Orgus and Macros were the beginnings. Um, before that, it was Speed Racer and yeah, Kimba and the White Lion. Uh, yeah, Kimba. Those were cartoons yeah. in the 1960s. You guys were definitely not born then. But we watched those when we were kids. We had no idea they were anime, but they were. Anyway. Yeah, because I know when I was a little kid, it's like I never seen the show, but I saw like the preview of commercials for other shows I was watching. Right. I was like, huh, what's that? Never heard of that. Right. Then as soon as I really started getting into anime when I got older, I'm like, oh my gosh, I've seen that before. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how did I not recognize that? <laughs> Come on, you're not older. Yeah. You're David. Con, I'll delete. Yep. But at the same t- well, at the same time, I'll be 30 in about a couple weeks. Oh, okay. Give me my kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but yeah. I, I might have jumped the gun, but those were the beginnings for us. And we got in right on the beginning. Mm-hmm. And you asked, uh, what's it like working in the anime industry today? Back then... There were only a couple of places to do the anime, and we knew all the actors. And for a long time, we were playing two or three parts per shows. And then we started seeing more and more of the wonderful talent pool in Los Angeles, and now you see everybody. Everyone does anime now, you know, oh, just yeah. about. Yeah. And um, out, of, <laughs> yeah, out of all the shows you've worked on, uh, which one is your favorite so far? It's like choosing your favorite child. Giver was fun because it was the beginning. Digimon was fun. I didn't know Agumon was going to take off the way he did. Pepper Breath. I didn't know that everyone was going to be so... I didn't know we'd still be doing it now. Um, I worked on something a couple of years ago called Condorito. That, I don't know if that's considered anime, but it was... No. It's not? No. no? My wife off camera. Um, <laughs> but that was fun. And uh, everything. I find something... I'm playing a lot of crazy people now. They... Uh, <laughs> uh, I play a lot of... Uh, like over the top on JoJo, which is such an over the top show, and uh, yeah. Rising of the I call it Rising of the Heat Shield, but it's not called that. It's called uh, what is it called, David? I believe. Hmm? Oh, yeah, Rising, Rising of, of the, the Shield, Shield Hero. Hero. Yes. That one as well. <laughs> I'm way over the top on that one, but it's I don't know I don't know how to pick the favorites, but uh, Dorothy and I once performed together on an episode of Digimon, not as Agumon. And not as Lilymon, which is what she played. She played a couple of parts. We played uh, Gigi Mon and what was the, the two old people? Baba Mon and Gigi Mon. We were an old couple, mm-hmm. like a hundred years old, and we were fighting a lot. And it was kind of like Billy Crystal and Carol Kane in Princess Bride. And it was for Digimon Tamers. You have to find this one. But that's one of my favorite. Um, oh, and Cowboy Bebop. Yes. I was on one episode of Cowboy Bebop 
I played Rocco Bonaro, yeah. and I had a great death scene. Spoiler alert. And, uh, right. and, and uh, I, you know what? I remember that. I enjoyed that. That was good. Because, oh, yeah. you know, as you can see, I'm kind of big and over the top. But on that one, it was a real, uh, just a real guy, you know, and kind of a young guy. And that was fun. That was with Steve Bloom, but we weren't in the studio together. We're never in the studio together, you know. Now, and out of the classic shows back in the day, what was it like performing on Guyver, the yeah. bio-boosted armor? Guyver was great, and that's when I realized it really takes a lot. Because uh, there were some screaming scenes and fight scenes, you know, Guyver! I mean, he was over the top. He's getting his limbs pulled apart, and you're screaming your lungs out. And back then, they didn't really know what they know now, which is if you have a session now, and if you're going to have to scream and yell, they try and save that for the end mm -hmm. of the session to save the actor's voice. But oh, back yeah. then, it's like, okay, so you're screaming, and it's like loop number five. You've got a hundred loops, so you're like, Guyver! And then you're like, your voice is like, hey, what's, you know, you <laughs> So, you know. Because yeah, I've always heard the best tip to help uh, co vocal cords afterwards is uh, honey. Honey is good. Mm -hmm. There's my wife. Oh, honey, right. Honey yeah. and lemon. Not yes. my wife, Dorothy, honey, right? It's a separate <laughs> thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the apples and the water. But now they time it so that you're screaming and yelling and you're fighting her at the end of the session. So uh, it's good. It's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah and uh, another show that you performed on, what was it like working on? Super Dimensions, Century Orgus. Oh, yeah, Orgus, that was the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, those were great. You know, we would do a Guyver, and then we would do an Orgus, like the next week. You would be in and out of these. I really think of those guys together. They were really back in the beginning. It was fun. Steve Bloom was on that. Victor Garcia, a great friend of ours, Dan Lerger, was on that. He moved to Reno, but he's a great actor. And my brother Jonathan, my sister Melissa, Dorothy. It was great. You got something? No, okay. Yeah, and another great show. What was it like working on Forest of Piano? Yeah, so Forest of Piano is recently, you've done your research. Very good, young man. Um, I'll tell you something about Forest of Piano. I play a uh, piano judge who's watching this very intense piano competition. And in anime, you're dubbing. You're dubbing, mm -hmm. you're, you're doing a better sync, hopefully, than the original language, right? Mm -hmm. You're trying. But you have to go one at a time, loop by loop, line by line. It's kind of laborious, but that's what it is. And after we've done it so far, we can be in and out in two hours. Mm -hmm. On Forest of Piano, my character is watching a piano player, and he's thinking his thoughts like, hmm, this guy is fantastic. And so I have all these monologues, but his mouth is not moving. Mm. It's, it's just his thoughts. So that's good. It's, <laughs> it, you know, it's not as, uh, not you as have to uh, worry about uh, getting the mouth movement. You know, it's all him going, my God, what a fantastic piano player so it's good it's good for us to piano it's on netflix right now you ever heard of that you know oh yeah yep and also for another classic for many fans uh what was it like working on digimon well digimon you know i showed up for the first audition and I, you see everyone you know richard epcar and mary elizabeth mcglynn and steve bloom and just michael sorich jeff nemo you see everybody knows everybody in los angeles it's like any business and so the they had some uh, animation laid out and I saw this little yellow dinosaur, and I thought, well, he's a, he's a cute little guy. And I'm thinking, maybe, maybe he would sound like that. You know, it's, it's, you just make a choice. And it was, I guess, the right choice. Because years later, I would hear the Japanese actor who plays Agumon. And his voice, it's like almost a Danny DeVito. Like, nah, nah, nah. It's down like that. Like, and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm up like here. You, know? you have to kind of kick me in the price to get that voice. Yeah, it's like high pit, but at the same time very raspy. Yeah, the, the Japanese yeah, guy, yeah, 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 yeah. And now we're doing Digimon again. But I didn't know we'd be doing it 20 years later or I'd be going to conventions and people would, they tell me the same thing. They go, dude, I came home after school. I put on Fox Kids. I watched Digimon and I love Agumon. That's what I hear the whole time, you know. So it's, it's, it's pretty, uh, I'm oh, yeah. a fan over there. Yep, Saturday mornings. Man, great memories yeah, there. Right. Yep, and uh, out of all the characters you've played, who would you be for a day? And you can mix and match. Of all the characters I played, who would I be for the day? <laughs> well, Rocco uh, Bonaro on Cowboy Bebop is pretty loosey-goose. He's fun. And then, you know, the crazy old guy we played on the Digimon Tamers. What was the character name again? Oh, ah. <laughs> Dorothy. What? Babamon, or which one was I? I don't know. I think uh, I'm Babamon and Gigimon. I think I'm Gigimon. And he's kind of a crazy old guy. Hey, what the heck? So I kind of like him. I, kinda, I like the characters that are fun, that are having fun. Not yeah. the maniacs or the psychopaths that I played on JoJo. And uh, I play a lot of psychos on those things. I, I don't know how they see me for that. But anyway. Yeah, like, all I can say is for the psychosis stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, <laughs> it's like therapy. You just let it yeah. out, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Have and you then, watched JoJo? 
Joe's. Crazy. Um, I haven't seen as much compared to one of my younger brothers. I know he's a bigger uh, viewer than I am on that show. We don't talk about your younger brother. I'm with yeah. you, buddy. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, is there... And for one of the recently released shows, what was it like working on Rising of the Shield Hero? Yeah, I, I played... I showed up for that, and I played this character, Idol... Idol... Idol, idol something, and he was just like a little guy in like a, uh, like a, like a Elizabethan like collar, and he was torturing this beautiful little. <laughs> and I'm like, really? And then the, there's a gigantic, uh, there's a monster. It's a, it goes crazy. It's insane. Whatever. I take a look at it and go, okay, let's do it. Let's go. You know, <laughs> you scream your lungs out for two hours, and you hope that you got it, and then you're out of there. You know, so yeah. So it was fun. Uh, you know, and uh, the crazy psycho parts they take a lot out of you, but it's fun. You know, yeah, and it's all fun. If it's not fun, get out of the business, right? You know. Yeah. And um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've been thinking about getting out the business, uh, my little brother. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Um. Is there anything else besides uh, Shield Hero, Shield Hero, that is coming out that you'd like to plug into our viewers at this time? Ooh, I'm on. NDA. I'm on a show yeah. called NDA. Oh, no, that's the non-disclosure agreement. Yep. I may or may be on a couple of video games coming next year. Don't say anything. May <laughs> or may be not. I can't say anything about it. And uh, I did a bunch of Forrester Piano, and I just worked on a show for Wendy Lee, who's a wonderful director, a wonderful actress, good person. And that's going to be on Netflix, but I can't mention the name of that either. So there's yeah. things coming. Look online. The information is there. You guys know more of my credits than I do. So, you know. Yeah, and is there any social media for our viewers tuning in that they could get a hold of you? Sadly, I'm on nothing. Uh, but you can go to my beautiful wife, Dorothy Fawn. Look her up, and uh, she books us on these conventions. She's fantastic. Gosh, I wish she was here right now. Hey. But there she is. <laughs> so, but if you go through Dorothy, she, find me that way. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I'm David. And I am Tom Fawn. So thank you for watching. Yeah, thanks for tuning in to the Ohio guys, everyone. See the you next Ohio time. Guys. I love these guys. Con all delete. Con all delete. Ho! Con all delete. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Yep. See you next I time, folks. I gave you the <laughs>